every time you walk in, I wanted to put up the seating chart again just because we only did it once. But every time you walk in, you're going to start the warm up. The warm up is always going to be posted on Canvas, and you're always going to do it on a separate sheet of paper. So let me present this for you. It's usually either a review question or an introduction to what we're going to learn today. So that's what this is. And on your sheet of paper, you can title it warm-ups, unit one forces, and then I'm going to basically stamp it every day once you have it completed. And you can just continue using this sheet. So if we put the date on kind of the left-hand uh, column, then you can just start working on the warm-up. You don't have to write down the question because you can always access this on Canvas and I'll show you where. So go ahead and get started on that. We're going to have like a couple minutes before we're all going to head off to um, grab our textbooks. So at 835, we're all heading over to station two. And I have the textbook. It looks like this. So this is what we're grabbing. The one with the bowling ball on it. Is it hard to see back there? Feel free to come up if you need a better view. And more than just answering the question, I want you to explain your thinking and your reasoning behind why you chose your answer. That is just as important as the answer that you choose. The other thing is when I stamp it today, if I don't see an explanation, it's not gonna get a stamp. So make sure you write out a decent explanation to why you chose your answer. Okay, I think it's about time for us to head over to the library. We're going to state, sorry, not the library, we're going to the cafeteria. If you have your green sheet, you are supposed to cut it off of your paper. All right, it looks like it's quieted down. So let's go ahead and vote for the first one. And this is when you're pushing the box in outer space. A, the box will move forever because nothing is slowing the box down. How many of you decided A was your answer? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Basically most of you. Doesn't mean the other two couldn't potentially be right. B, the box will slow down because the push that you gave it will eventually wear out. How many think it'll actually slow down? Don't be nervous. Sometimes the only one is the right one. And then the last one is the box will slow down because it'll eventually lose all its energy. So another slow down, but this one is focused on energy. All right, so everyone decided 24, so you can feel pretty confident that you're correct, but I want an explanation. Can I get a volunteer to give me an explanation as to why they think so? Okay, I'm gonna try to get names here. Um, let me have Bella? Leah. Leah, sorry. <laughs> I have to go like this. Okay. Leah, go ahead and tell me what your thought was. Beautiful. There's no opposing forces. Friction is the main opposing force that causes things to stop, stop when we push it. And that's something that we're kind of used to. But if we didn't have friction, if we didn't have the opposing force, it would go on forever. Do you really believe that? It will really go on forever and ever and ever without even slowing down a little bit? Anyone wanted to add something to that? Sure. 
sure if there are like little particles in outer space. We do know there's like shooting stars and things like that in outer space. But assuming it is a perfect vacuum, it would move on forever. I like that deeper thinking. Yeah, I also said something like that. Like, you don't continue to move until it is infected. Like, you can't say for sure it's not going to enter something where there is gravity. Some sort of other force. Yeah, beautiful. I love it. In terms of, there are forces in outer space. If you get closer to a planet, you do feel gravity from that planet. And obviously, when you come into the Earth's atmosphere, you get a lot of forces from air and wind and other particles. So the answer is A, assuming that it's a perfect vacuum, it would be C if you came closer to some sort of object or force or particles. Beautiful. Okay, so what I want to get into today is we're going to talk about exactly this. An object in motion will stay in motion. And that's assuming it's in a vacuum or has no opposing forces, right? So can anyone tell me what law that's related to? Do you remember from maybe middle school? I think that's when you probably talked about it. Um, let me grab my sheet here. I'm still, Asa. Inertia. Any other word for it? Um, let me have Tomer. Newton's law. Which one? Uh, remind me your, is it not Declan? De Declan? No. Oh, that's you? Did you have your hand raised? No. Okay. <laughs> well, remind me your name again. Oh, right here. Did you have an answer though? Okay. So how about you help Tomer out? First law. So we're talking about first law. Perfect natural beginning. It'll take me a while to get your names. I try, but I really, it'll take me a while. I did watch your videos, but um, let's talk about Newton's first law for a moment. So Newton's first. Another word that we can call this is inertia, but inertia is more specific to another topic. But Newton's first, can anyone tell me Newton's first law? Do they have it memorized? Here, remind me your name? Oh, Sienna. Sienna. An object in motion stays in motion, and an object in rest stays in rest. Object in motion stays in motion. Object. object at rest stays at rest. Anything else that we want to add to this? Ooh, this side of the room is really active. Um, remind me your name? Kay. Kayla? Uh, Ellie. Ellie. <laughs> and what's the last part of this? Uh, unless acted upon by an outside force. You don't have to write this down. I'll show you where you can find it. But if you don't have it memorized, it's basically that an object is going to want to keep doing what it's doing. If it's at rest, it's going to stay at rest. If it's moving, it's going to stay moving, unless acted on by an outside force. Inertia is basically the same thing, but I'm going to add one more part to inertia. And it is reflected on when we do our lab today. So in our lab, pull out your Newton's first lab. You can cross out the Tonka truck. I'm going to demo that for you next class. And I don't want you to use it when we do this lab today. This lab right here is going to be the evidence that you use for your first CER, your first claim, evidence, and reasoning. Your claim is this that objects in motion stay in motion and that objects at rest stay at rest. I want you to prove both. 
So as you're going through these labs station by station, I want to make sure that you are actually trying to find evidence that either proves this claim or disproves this claim. So the stations have instructions, and we're going to go through it one at a time. I'm going to say five minutes. Some of these stations take longer than others, but um, I want to make sure that you're being efficient with your time. So group by group, you're going to hop from station to station. There are a few that students love, and they don't want to move forward. I'm going to give you about five minutes. If you get done in five minutes, move on to the next one, whatever open station you find. And if you don't get done in the five minutes, then you got to move on because other people want to use that station. So you're going to kind of hop from one station to the next. You're going to go in the same groups that you were in last time. So you're going to pair up with your group. And then we're going to um, make sure that everyone can get to as many stations as possible in the next like 30 minutes. So I've got a station up front and a station at each lab. And a lot of these stations, you're going to have to film it in slow motion. 